In 2011, Tahrir Square became the symbol of the Arab uprisings as massive crowds of protesters gathered in central Cairo to demand the removal of Hosni Mubarak. Two years on, Tahrir once again became the centre of protest, only this time to demand the removal of his successor, Egypt's first democratically elected government led by Mohamed Morsi. With the help of the army, demonstrators were able to oust the Islamist president, yet his removal leaves behind a deeply divided country, torn between Islamists and more secular-minded Egyptians. Hello and welcome back to Analysis Review. With me here to discuss Egypt and how events there will now impact on the wider Middle East are Professor Fawaz Jerjes from the London School of Economics, welcome, and Rula Halaf, the FT's Middle East editor. I'd like to start with you, Professor. I mean, you've described what happened just recently as a soft coup. I think if uh, one looks at it now, one might actually say it's a bit harder than that, isn't it? Yeah, it is a coup, period. Uh, there was the military, some debate about whether the, one should the, use that word or not. But the no. military is the kingmaker. The military is the power broker the military is the driver. And General Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, the defense minister, is basically the driver behind the coup and the driver behind the agenda for the transition in the next six months. So the reality is, if it was not for the military, uh, President Mohamed Mursi, the first democratically elected president in Egypt modern history, would be with us today, it undermines the fragile democratic experience in Egypt. The military had policy choices. This was not the only choice. The military could have introduced checks and balances. It could have fettered Morsi's hand. It could have forced Morsi to appoint a prime minister. It basically chosen to the worst case option, that is to force Morsi out of power. And that's why I would argue that far from resolving the underlying social and political struggles, basically it further polarizes Egypt and the Egyptian political scene. I mean, Rula, bring you in here. I mean, what does this mean for all those hopes and aspirations of the Arab uprising in terms of introducing more democracy, talks of a political Islam? What we've seen in the last few days is that a lot of the things that people were criticizing Mercy for are now being done again, but th there's been a sort of reversal of, of roles in that there is now another part of the population, and that is the Islamists, the supporters of the Brotherhood, who are being sidelined, and another power who is concentrating, uh, who's, who's trying to monopolize now the decision making. Um, obviously, there are various, this is Egypt, and Egypt is a trendsetter in the region, so this reverberates all over the region. I think when you reach a point where um, Bashar al-Assad, the president of Syria, is actually calling for the downfall of an elected president, you get a sense of where we are in what we've called the Arab Spring. Is this the end? No, it's not the end. This is the first very, very difficult phase of a transformation that was always going to be difficult. It has proved even more difficult than, you know, or the, pes the, the pessimistic scenario suggested. Okay, can I just developing the points that both of you have actually made, the, the sort of the wider context regionally, but also outside interests, if you'd like. I mean, we've read a lot, heard a lot about money coming from the Gulf into Egypt, considerable sums of money. What, 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 what's behind that? Think about it. Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, and Kuwait have pledged $10 million in aid to Million Egypt. or bil Billions. Billions immediately after the ouster of President Mohammed Morsi. To Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, the Muslim Brotherhood is a subversive force. Basically, uh, they view it as, as very dangerous because they, 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 they fear uh, that it might subvert their monarchies. And of course, they resented Morsi's flirtation with the Islamic Republic, uh, a major rival for the Gulf states. Remember, the big fault in the, in the Middle East today is between the Iranian-led alliance and the Saudi-led alliance and the ouster uh, of Morsi in the eyes of Saudi Arabia and the United Arab uh, Emirates basically delivers a hard blow to Iran because of President Morsi and the Muslim Brotherhood and the Islamists in general. Right. What does this mean for players like the US, which was also, has been, still is, uh, involved in Egypt militarily with uh, financial aid? 
I think this is another example, and we've been seeing this for a long time now, of American influence in the region uh, declining quite considerably. And it's the, dem it's the regional players who are um, much more in control of what happens. What th the region's been divided over the past um, couple of years between the old order and an emerging new, new order. And the old order, which is represented chiefly by, by Saudi Arabia, has tried to resist as much as possible the changes taking place. Uh, we saw that in Bahrain, for instance. I think Syria has been a very special case because it's seen as a, a part of a Cold War against against Iran. And I think Egypt is a, you know, it's a, this is a big triumph for those who have not wanted real, real change according to, you know, what people's desires, ultimately. Rula, Fawaz Jerzis, thank you very much. And thank you for watching. To follow more on Egypt and other stories covered by our analysis team, go to ft.com forward slash analysis.